Next thing to do is to ensure that the jointer is true. Remember, as I say, half the rock, and I'm going to use the fence. How are you? For anyone who's a newbie who wants to learn how to use a jointer to create a piece of square timber out of a rocky old piece of aeroplane propeller, <laughs> stick with me. Anyone else who's fine with a jointer, you're not going to be interested in watching this video. So I will see you on the next one. But for everyone else, here we now, go. I have this piece of timber. I'm going to make my job a whole lot easier. I don't need this two and a half meter length. I'm going to dock it down to a meter either side and that will reduce my twist by half. That's the first thing. Next thing to do is to ensure that the jointer is true. <laughs> There's a whole lot of videos out there to test whether it's coplane or all that kind of thing. I try to ensure that the fence is dead square to the outfeed table. It's nice to have the infeed table as close as possible as well, but this is the crucial one. So as I'm feeding timber through, I'm going to ensure that I'm pushing down onto the outfeed table. Now, I'm not really going to push against the fence too much at this stage. I need to get the bottom of the piece of timber dead plain flat. With a jointer, all it is is a dirty big plane upside down and front to back. So here's a plane. I turn it upside down and front to back. Now, this is the end that's going to be the same as that. When you're using a plane and pushing forwards, you're putting all of your weight onto the back here. This is the largest reference point on a plane. The front part is just to stop it digging in. But as you're going along, this is the area that's going to remain flat and true. Same applies for this. Now, the advantage with the jointer is that I have this fence as well, which I try and keep at 90 degrees. You can set it up at the back, have stops in it, but it's always nice to get an engineer square out and test it before you use it. This is that piece of cypress pine that I've just docked. And you can see she's got a fair bit of rock. So I'm looking at that and thinking, if I take it all off one end, I'm not going to take it off the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the amount of rock there and I'm going to try and halve it by, by eye and by memory, you know, from doing this stuff for a while. So I'm not going to push it hard up against the fence at the moment. I'm not going to push it like that and I'm not going to pull it back all the way till it bottoms here. I'm going to halve that and then I'll be pushing down there. Now this piece of timber is four inches by four inches. I'm really not in a situation where I need to use a push block in this. It's long enough. It's deep enough, I can keep my hands clear. If this was smaller timber and shorter, definitely I would be using a push block. But I need to steer this just by hand for the moment. I'm going to turn on the dust extractor. And that's hooked up through this port and coming through the blade area there. I've set, I've set the depth to one millimeter. I don't want to go crazy with this, just a bit at a time and that's going to be better for the machine and also leave a cleaner finish on the timber. Helical heads are nice and quiet. How quiet is that? Here we go. Oh, here's another tip. Don't start the machine up like I just did then with the timber on the, on the guard open. Leave it back from it when you turn the machine on could be dangerous. You might have left it actually on the blade and it'll flick or else it'll damage the machine. Here we go. Remember as I say, half the rock and I'm going to use the fence as a guide. I'm going to hold, hold it halfway. There we go. Now I can push down on that side. As we're coming along, it's going to slowly transfer the twist. The blades will be cutting on the other side. And I'll show you a picture. Nothing at this end and most of it on that end. It's missing a little bit here, see? I'm transferring the cut from this side to that side. Works really well. Now when I put it through, I don't have to compensate at all. I have reference points that are already cut into the board. So I'm just going to push it straight over. Best not to have your hand hanging over the back. If you have your hand hanging over the back on your palm there, you may end up cutting it. Try and keep it over there. I use it up to about this point. Then I transfer my hand to here and get a grip up the front. 
There we go. That's nearly good enough. That is nearly good enough. Now that will be as straight as a tack. I'll put it up one more pass. Move my hand up the front. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, I've stopped it there for a couple of reasons. One, to show you, there's no rubbish going onto my floors. There's no rubbish all over the machines. Dust extraction is crucial. You know, it's, this is such a clean environment because I have good dust extraction in the building. Now we're going to turn the board at 90 degrees and we're going to push that up against the fence. So no, we're not going to worry about it rocking around on here at all, just as long as we're hard up against that fence. So instead of pushing down as I approach onto the outfeed table, I'm going to be pushing against the fence and down a little. Then, and also I will check the back. See how it lifted up then? Just be aware that when you're bringing it up to the blades, that you want it against the fence as well. Don't be tempted to push down, because see what happens just then? I think the other camera can see it. I'll bring it onto there and you can watch it on the other side. So as I say, if I'm going to push it against the fence, watching the other camera over here, see that? No good. If I'm pushing down, I need to push against the fence. So I'll bring it back to there and we'll turn everything on and give it another shot. We'll do a couple of passes. Okay, turn it on. Pushing against the fence, I don't want fingers down here, that's very dangerous, up here, but pushing against the fence. So we're going to steer it with the back hand against the fence and put the pressure on. There we go. So that's hardly cutting anything. Now that's going to be an interesting pass. A little bit there and a little bit there on the opposing sides of the face. Now this should be a whole lot easier this time. On the top. Let's have a look at that. There we go. Thought it might have been a nail, but it's a spider. How cool is that? Just gonna use the push blocks just for, just as a matter of peace of mind. All right, now that's not too hard. We have now created one square edge and one square face. Just because it's a square section doesn't mean it's gonna be any different. Edges and faces, always. Now, that will be 90 degrees and the proof will be in the pudding if we put the square on it. I'll bring, the, I'll bring it up too. Now, I haven't put anything on it yet. Do you like that? Just so I'm not cheating. Back here. And back here. How good is that? Now we'll also check the straight. This bench is very, very straight. Putting the timber on it, there's no wobble. Putting the timber on it, no wobble. Push it onto the other one. Look at that. And the last one. It's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? That's why they call them a jointer. It makes everything beautifully straight, and I showed you how square it was as well. To get the other two faces, or other two edges, nice and straight and parallel, I would run it through my thickness planer. And I would have it so that the dress side is down on the bed, and the cutter head would be running over the top. And there you go, it would replicate whatever's on the underneath, it will transfer onto the top. Take a little while, but it'll get there, and that's what I'm gonna do next. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time, and don't forget, there's the like button down there, down, down, down there under the screen is the like button, I need you to click that, and then also down in this area there's a picture of my face, <laughs> click on the face, and it's the subscribe button, keep on coming back, links in the description box below, and I shall see you next time, bye.